Hello, welcome on to my channel. Today we are going to discuss entity relationship model and a diagram. In the previous lecture, we have seen different types of the DPMS. In that, we have already seen the ER best DPMS. In conjunction with an SM1, today we are continuing our discussion for the entity relationship model and diagram. As we have already known that the database consists of very huge and a complex kind of an a data. So when we are trying to design the database, we have to consider the different condition, very, very small thing, different kinds of the inputs we have to be considered from the stakeholders and, and many more people to represent all these requirements to satisfy the client's requirement. We take the help of the graphical representation. As in a human psychology, we all know that instead of reading a huge kind of an, a document, if we are trying to represent that concept in a, in a figure or the graphical format, in a diagrammatical format, it is very quickly understood. And for the same reason, we are taking the help of the diagrams for representing the database design. That is nothing but called as the ER model. ER stands for Entity Relationship Model. In 1976, scientist Charles Hem developed the Entity Relationship Model, which is a very high-level conceptual data model. It is the diagram that first step of the database design to specify the required components of the database system and the relationship among all these components. This ER model represents the real world entities and the relationship between them. It helps to systematically analyze the data requirement to produce a well-designed database. It is a conceptual design for the database. It develops a very simple and easy to de design a view of an data. As this one is one kind of an skeleton or the structure of the database design, we can say that the database structure is portrayed as the diagram called as the entity relationship diagram. Then is there any need of such formation of an a diagram? Obviously, answer is yes. This ER diagram is very much helpful for defining the terms related to the entity relationship modeling. Creating the ER model in the DPMS is considered as a best practice before implementing your database because it will be gives you the all conditions, parameters, that is how many, what are the character, what are the inputs are there, how are they going to be interrelated, how many number of tables are there, how they are going to be interrelated with each other. All this information we can be get with the help of an ER diagrams very quickly. In a database, there are the different inputs are there. How many entities are there? Which are that? What are their attributes? And how they are going to be interrelated? That all is very easily described with the help of an ER diagram. These are translatables into the relational tables, which allows you to build a database very quickly. By realizing, by understanding all these inputs, what are the requirements, what are the inputs, how they are going to be related, the programmer very easily get the concept which will be helpful for them for the coding very quickly and in a very sophisticated environment. Next is, with the help of this ER diagram, we can be get the better understanding of all the information to be contained in a database with this diagram. This allows you to communicate with a local structure of the database to the user. These are very easily understandable and that's why we are just forming this ER diagram with the help of some of the symbols and the notation. ER diagram is a visual representation of an data that describes how data is related to each other using the ER, ERD symbols and the notations. ER models allow you to draw the database design. It is easy to use the graphical tool for the modeling of an data. 
and this graphical tool is formed with the help of some of the symbols. It is, you can say, a GUI representation of a logical structure of the database. It helps you to design the entities which exist in a system and the relationship between these entities. For this representation of the entities and all these requirements, we are considering a special kind of an symbol. Like in a C programming language, we are creating a flowchart with some kind of a special feature. The same thing we are trying with the help of ER diagrams. We, this one is one example that is an, a student is an, one entity, a person which is having a different attributes, characteristics, name, address, age, and this one. So by just viewing this figure, we will be get that this is an, a student and we have to be work out for these characteristics. Next, the components of the ER diagram. For the formation of the database design, we are taking the inputs from the different uh, client name number of and stakeholders and all the what are their inputs what are the outputs they are requiring what is the environment they are required so all these kind of an a discussion we are reflecting in our database design in such a way all your components of the uh, database is going to be differentiated based on the three categories first is entity attributes and another is the relationship the entity maybe it is an, a strong entity or a weak entity attribute may be a simple or it may be a composite key multi-value or the derived and more than one entities may be related with each other that is called as an, a relationship this relationship may be based on one to one one to many many to one or many to many Let's see these all the components in detail one by one. The first is nothing but an entity. What is the entity? A real world thing, either living or a non-living, that is easily recognizable or not recognizable. All this one is nothing but called as an entity. Anything in a real world with its own independent existence is called as an entity. It may be a place, person, object, concept, anything. All this one is called as an entity. For example, a person. It may be a, it may be a student, employee, patient, anything. Event means it is related with an sale, registration, renewal, object, anything. It may be a machine, bench, car, product, anything which is having its own value, which is having its own some, something specialized feature. All this one is called as an entity. An entity set is the group of an, a similar kind of an entity called as an entity set. It may contain entities with an attribute sharing the similar value. Nextly, the attribute. As each and the every entity having its own features, own characteristics, it is called as an attribute. Entities can be represented with their property called as an attribute. For example, if this one is an, a transaction is one kind of an, a process, then what are its features? It having some of the transaction number, it having some kind of the amount and the type. So transaction number, amount, type, these are the called as an attribute of a transaction entity. As we have seen that attribute may be having often a different one. That is simple attribute. Simple attribute can be directly converted into a column in a relational model. When it is called as an, a simple attribute, which cannot be divided into the subparts, it is called as an, a simple attribute. For example, the salary of the employee cannot be broken into some another parts or a mobile number of a student cannot be break down. So this is simple attribute. Composite attribute, which can be divided into the subparts. For example, a student or the employee name can be represented as first name, middle name, and the last name. So this is composite attribute. Derived attributes, these the value of these attributes can be derived from the value of the related stored attribute is called as an a derived attributes. For example, a uh, age of the employee can be calculated from its date of birth or 
the service period can be calculated from the date of joining. These are derived attributes. Next is multi-valued attributes. These having many values for a particular entity, then it is called the multi-valued attribute. For example, any of the employee or the student may have different mail IDs and the contact numbers. And the last is very important. It is nothing but an key attribute. If the entity having its own special, unique characteristics, unique feature, that is called as an, a key attribute. That is, for example, a student is uniquely identified by its role number. So, role number is the key attribute of an, a student. Similarly, employee ID, faculty ID, that gives the special kind of an identification for each and the every one on, on the basis of what which they are going to be identified that is called as an, a key attribute. Nextly, the relationship. Obviously, if there are the two entities or more than two entities, then they are going to be related. They are communicate with each other. That is called as an, a relationship. It is nothing but an association between two or more entities. For example, Tom works in the chemistry department. Tom is one kind of an entity. Chemistry department is one kind of an entity. Then how they are related? That is working is one kind of an activity carried out by the Tom that put down the relationship between Tom and the department. We can often identify this relationship in a form of an words or the word phrases. So all this kind of an discussion I'm trying to represent in over here with the help of an diagram. So here is the entity which is represented with a rectangle. Attribute is represented with an oval shape and the relationship is with the help of an diagram. Let's entity, entity A may be any place, object, person, anything. So let's consider here are the two entities, one is car and another is student. Attributes are nothing but an characteristics. So the car may having its model number, the you can say the different color. These are the attributes of the car. Similarly, student, student may having a student ID or name. These are the attributes. Now, how they are going to be related with each other? That is nothing but a relationship. To putting down the relationship, we are taking the help of any of the friends. So, we can say that the blue car belongs to the student chat. So, blue is the attribute of the entity car. Jack is the attribute of the entity student and they are related with belongs or this ownership that is put down the relationship or you can say that Jack is the owner of the blue car. So in this way all these kind of an entities and their attributes are represented. This one is the beauty of the ER diagram. Next point that we are going to discuss over here it is cardinality. It defines the numerical attributes of the relationship between the two entities or the entity set. The two entities may be related with each other in a different ways. It may be a one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many many -to -many, and many-to-one. Based on that, the cardinality is differentiated as one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-many relationship, many-to-one or many-to-many. -many. What is it? First of all, one-to-one -one means a one entity from the entity, one entity, entity set is associated with only one entity from the another set. That is one to one. One to many means that one entity from one set is going to be related with many entities into the another set. For example, a SY class may be consist of the 10 students from row number one to 10. So one class having many students. That is one to many. Next is many to one. More than one entity from one set is going to relate with only one entity into the another set. Then it is called many to one. The 10, the 10 students from roll number one to 10 are enrolled for the course database management system. That is called as many to one. Many students belong to the same class. This one is the another example. Next is many to many. That is one entity from the 
one set can be associated with more than one entities into the another entity and vice versa. This is called as many to many. For example, there are the many students and the many faculty. Many students can be related with many faculties and vice versa. Students as a group are associated with multiple faculty and multiple faculties can be associated with multiple students. That is both of the both of the entities having many quantity that is related with each other many to many. These are some kind of symbols that are used to represent the cardinality. If there is only one to one communication, you can be used with a straight line. If it is many to one, one is related with this single line and the many is going to be represented with this branch like structure. So it is the input is one, it is given towards the many people. So it is one to many. If it is many, may be converted towards anything. So this one is simple many. If many inputs is given towards the only one, then it is one, uh, one or more, or you can say many to one. Only one to one, it is related with these double lines. When it will be started from zero and given towards the one or the optional, that is zero to one. And it will be from zero to many, that kind of an thing. These are the way how we are going to put down the relationship between the different entities. Next, now as we have as just discussed that AR model, it is a graphical representation. To make this figure, to make this diagram, we are using the special symbols that are called as the components of the ER diagram. The ER component are basically of a three entity attribute and the relationship. The entity is going to be represented with a rectangle. Attribute is represented with an oval kind of an structure and relationship is represented with diamond kind of an structure. If the entity is an a weak entity, it is represented with an a double rectangle. If the relationship is an a weak relationship, it is represented with double diamond kind of an structure. And if the attribute is an a multi-valued, then it is represented with double eclipse format. Key attributes or the primary key is represented with an underline. The unique characteristics of the any entity can be represented by underlying that characteristics. Links, it links the attributes to entity type and the entity type with other relationship type. So that relationship is put down with the help of analytics. Now, we, the point that we are going to just see over here is that how to create an entity relationship diagram. Now, we will be just taking out all the basic background. What is ER diagram? Why it is important? How it is going to? What are, the, what are its contents? And what are the symbols used for the formation? Now, we will be just see the different kinds of steps to complete the ERD. So for that, let's consider one example. In a university, a student enrolled in a courses. A student must be assigned to at least one or more courses. Each course is taught by a single professor. To maintain the instruction quality, a professor can deliver only one course. So this is the problem. Any kind of an ERD can be formed with an four different steps. Out of that, the first step is we have to identify what are the entities that problem contains. With this problem, we can be seen that, in short, what this problem tells you, that is a, a student can be enrolled for the many courses. For each and the every course is taught by one professor. So, after summarizing this problem, we come to conclusion that what are the entities in this that student course and a professor. So these are the basic three parts or the entities in this problem. So this is the nothing but identity, entity identification. Nextly, we have to put down some of the relationship between all these entities. Here, the entities are represented with a rectangle that is a student course and a professor. As we have just seen in a problem that student may be enrolled or took the admission for the different courses. So we can say that 
the student is enrolled or assigned or took the admission for a course. So the relationship between these two entities is formed with the phrase assigned, enrolled or admitted. This is the relationship put down between student and the course entity. Nextly, there are the many courses for each and the every course is delivered by the individual professor. So professor delivers a course. Professor, one professor teaches a one course. So this teaching or delivering this put down the relationship between professor and the course. So delivers is nothing but a relationship. Relationship is represented with this diamond kind of shape. So this is the second step that is we are relating the entities with the help of some kind of relationship. The next step is nothing but cardinality identification. As cardinality means that how they are going to be related with the each other. That may be one to one, many to one, many to many or one to many like that. So we are just going to be identify this one. From this problem statement, we come to know that a student may be enrolled for the many number of the courses. This is a student entity and the course entity. Means that there are the many number of the student and many number of the courses also. So that is related with the many to many. They are going to be assigned number of the student can be taken out number of the courses. One student can be enrolled for the many courses, such there are the many students available which can be enrolled for the many different courses. So it is many to many relationship is established in between the student and course entity. Though there are the different courses and the different professors are there, but we know that each professor teaches only one course. That is, a professor can deliver only one course. So, from one professor is related with only one course, that is one to one. So, in this way, we are just from the cardinality in the different entities. And the last step over here is nothing but the identification of the attributes. So, each and the every entity having its own special features are called as an attribute. Entity student may having its name. Each and the every student is uniquely identified with its role number or the ID. So the student may have the entities as the student ID and the student name. The name, the two students may be having some of the similar names, but the, each and the every student is going to be identify with this roll number. So that is the special unique characteristics of the student entity called as an key attribute which is represented with an underline. These are the attributes that is an a student ID, course ID, employee ID, name of the student course and the professor entities are re attributes are represented in a oval kind of an a shape. So with this, all this, that is identification of the entities, attributes, and the relationship. Now, this one is a final diagram we have just created. This is called as an ER diagram. By identification of this, you come to know very quickly that this problem consists of a student, course, professor. They are, there may be the many students, there may be the different courses, they are multi they are interrelated with each other and one professor having only aligned with only one course. So in this way, we have just formed all the diagram over here. So in summary, if I want to just uh, conclude over here, we can say that ER model in the DBML stands for Entity Relationship Model. The ER model is a high-level data model diagram. It Uses it is an, a visual tool which is helpful to represent the ER model. This diagram in the DBMS are the blueprints of the database. Entity relationship diagram DBMS play, displays the relationship of the entity set stored in the database. It helps you to define the terms related to the entity relationship modeling. The ER model consists of the basic concept that is entities, attributes, and the relationship. 
Entity may be a place, person, object, anything. Relationship is nothing but an association between two or more entities. The entity may be a strong entity or a weak entity. Attribute is nothing but an characteristics of the entity. It helps you to define the number numerical attributes of the relationship between the two entities and the entity set. The ER diagram is the visual representation of any data that describes how the data is related with each other. While drawing the ER diagram in the DBMS, we need to make sure all your entities and the relationship are properly labeled or not. So this one is all for the today's session. Thank you.